Welcome to the Thoughtful Gamer Podcast, episode number 97. We're back and here to count down numbers 75 through 51, the second of our four top 100 games of all time countdown episodes, or I guess more specifically, my top 100 games of all time. As always, I'm Mark. Here with me is Orion. I am Orion, and I do not endorse the order of this list. <laughs> Lindsay. I endorse everything. And Mark. I'm just here to watch. <laughs> Fun fact, if you listen to last week's episode, we're, we're recording this at the exact same time. A peek behind the curtain. Mm. So we just introduced ourselves like an hour ago. Now we're doing it again. But yeah, it's my top 100 games of all time list. To repeat how I came up with this list, I have all the games I've played rated. Uh, I take the games that comprise the highest ratings. I throw them in by rating into the pub meeple ranking engine, which lets you rank things by giving you head to head pairings. And then I have it sorted out that way. So for instance, all the eights got sorted out all that way. All the games are rated 8.5 were sorted out that way, etc., etc. That's how we get the list. Last time we went through numbers 100 through 76. I don't think there was too much controversy. Uh, this time we've got 74 through 50, or excuse me, 75 through 51. Five of them are going to be brand new, brand new to the list. And the rest, we've got some big risers and big fallers. Yeah, we got we got everything on here. This one, just glancing at this section of the list, there's a lot of games that I really want to play more that I haven't played for a very long time and I definitely want to play again uh, but haven't played for a while so that, maybe that'll be the theme other than the new ones which I have played recently but yeah let's start off with number 75 we'll get a nice solid game that I pull out semi-frequently because it's just so easy to play that's London second edition uh, Martin Wallace's tableau building card game it's solid it's really, really solid. I like it quite a bit. Beautiful engine builder. Yeah. Uh, I was playing another game recently that reminded me of this one. What was it? Was it that factory game at the convention at PAX? The factory game. Oh, Furnace? Oh, Furnace. Oh, uh, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. I don't remember what game it was. Yeah, that one kind of reminds... Yeah, it's got the engine building. What was the one... Oh, Oceans. Oceans reminded me hmm. of sec London uh, because it's a tableau builder where you're, there's outside pressure on the size of your tableau. Um, I, and I like London a little bit more, but it's got, as you build up your tableau, you risk uh, taking on, is it poverty is the negative? Yep. Yeah, poverty. And, you know, as, as a good industrialist, you, you don't want any of that around. Uh, so you have to do things like... Build yeah, you have lights. to wash it away with the sewers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have to do things to try to combat poverty. Uh, it's, a, it's a really, really solid game. Number 74, which is going to be the first of a string of three new games to the list. This one is actually... I got an early version of it, and it literally just shipped out to Kickstarter supporters. That is Union Station, a little rail, rail game. Uh, that I kind of fell in love with. It was really, really interesting. There's another podcast I listened to, and man, they hated this game. But I didn't find their criticisms to necessarily be true. As it stands right now, I think this is a really fascinating game. If you didn't get in on the Kickstarter, I think there are probably a few copies that are being sold through retail, but I, I think it's mostly was going to be a one-off Kickstarter release. Uh, so unfortunately it'll be hard to find except by second hand, but I maybe really if it. you're as high level Patreon, you can win this in a giveaway from Mark. <laughs> yeah. Except I want to keep my copy. <laughs> oh, well, never mind then. I don't know. Someone, maybe if you're a Patreon someone... in the Boston area, you can come play it with Mark. <laughs> I don't know. If someone offers me, en I mean, you know, if you offer me enough money, I'll sell any of my games. <laughs> $1. No. Okay. <laughs> two dollars the size i can go <laughs> <laughs> oh man this game was right. fun it had it had an interesting kind of <laughs> jockeying for position around the bidding and when you go over the the payout um thresholds or check mark checkpoints or whatever 
but I, I, I could see it breaking down after you played a couple times, but the first time it was very interesting and I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I played it a couple more times and I, I deliberately tested out some stuff and it never broke. Never broke okay, down. Let's go. So, cool. Yeah, it was interesting. Number 73, another new train game, although its relationships to trains is tenuous, yeah. is Imperial Spells and Steam uh, from Trade Chambers and Level 99 uh, games. I say it has a tenuous relationship to trains because it has no concept of routes. <laughs> So there are situations where your route, quote unquote, can like skip spaces and teleport across the map. And the route just means things your cubes are on or adjacent to. But regardless of that, it's got a really, really cool kind of time track thing going on with your own player board and you upgrade it and you're kind of, it's it's almost like a rondelle. Kind of. Yeah, sort of. You're kind of looping around over and over, hitting certain actions that you then upgrade on your own player board, which I think is the most interesting part of the game. Yeah, it's really cool. It's it's really kind of unique. Yeah, I was just expecting for how grandiose of a reduction I was expecting it to be a bigger game, and just from level 99, it's just sort of... It's good. Uh, it's just a little bit yeah, you see, duller than I expected. You see that giant cube of a box yeah. that fills up like almost an entire... Calyx cube shelf and you expect something massive and epic and uh no it's it's a lean game uh it's a lean like 60 minute game I'm sure you think that, that game beats though some other ones on the list like that it beats um like viticulture or you're just Go. gonna bring up viticulture for every game aren't you for every game i'm just like because i feel like it's just such a high quality game so i guess i should start comparing to other ones on the list but yeah i think that is interesting so i remember enjoying imperial but i wouldn't say like personally, I liked it better than some of the games lower down. That's the measure. Just like looking at yeah, just looking games. at games down below the list. That it just seems like there are other ones that I, even though I enjoyed Imperial, I would definitely say that other the like, other ones below this would go above it for me personally. I've only played it like twice though, so there's something to be said for that too. You do have to get over how like your expectations based on that box size and like the extravagance of the production. I don't know if there's a more modest version of it. But I think there should be mm -hmm. like in a normal box, a normal sized box with maybe just cubes instead of the, you know, individualized train bits. I don't know. I, I, I the game, I think the production would match the scope of the game at that point. Is this one out of one Gloomhaven boxes? I bet it's it's definitely taller than the Gloomhaven box. I think it's, it's, um... it's a square, though. It's a cube, I think. <laughs> In volume, Gloomhaven may still be bigger. Number 72, another new game to the list, uh, in this one, really surprised me. I'd heard good things about it, but I wasn't expecting to like it this much. And that's Battle for Paterna. Paternia. Sorry. Battle for Paternia is a game designed to be a MOBA board game. So kind of like League of Legends. And I think it does a spectacular job at it. Uh, because it focuses specifically on the hero fights, doesn't really have the mobs. Is that what people call them? Mobs or minions? Yeah. Is mobs like the generalized term and minions is the league specific term? Minions is the league specific term. Mobs or creeps is the generic term. Gotcha. Yeah. So it kind of Actually, gets rid of those. Mobs is more from like Diablo or something. Creeps, I think, is the MOBA term. Oh. Yeah, I think you're right. I got to change my vernacular. Anyway, doesn't really deal with those, just deals with the hero and hero stuff. And it does a really, really good job at it. There, are, I think, would be a lot of designers that would really stumble in trying to do a MOBA style game on board gaming by making the map much too big. So in other words making it so it takes a few turns to cross the map because that's kind of what you experience in the video game. But the brilliance of this one is that like everything is within three movement spaces of it, of any other point on the map. It's really, really constrained. And so every bit of movement feels important, which is where a lot of like map based games falter is there's lots of boring movement turns where you just move around and do nothing else. Number 71 is, I just realizing is right n next to or near uh, his other game, Trade Chambers again, uh, with Harvest, his little tiny 30-minute version of Agricola. 
which works was really well. Was this the well. one with the poop? Yeah, it has the poop. Okay. It's yeah, got yeah, poop yeah. bits. I mean, that, that the poop propels resource. it further up the list, I'm sure, you know, subconsciously. Does that mean yeah, Dungeon that's Pets like, is on here? Does Dungeon Pets actually have, like, poop figurines? No, I don't remember. Just, just that, cubes. Oh, that so. theory, should it be number two on the list, or automatically? <laughs> yeah. I hate it here. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that, that leaves dungeon pets off the list. <laughs> it actually, ha- this one actually has the poop emoji as a piece. So yeah, yeah it's got like a custom poop piece. It's really yeah. funny. I'll have to upgrade my copy of dungeon pets and then it'll go on your list. Dungeon pets is, pets is actually, I think my least favorite Vlada yeah, game. Yes. Interesting. That's one of my favorites of this. Not because I, think- I dislike it because I think it's oh, sure. the safest game. Oh, no, actually, no, my least favorite Vlada game is Tosh Kalar. That's fair. I yeah. played that once and did not like it. Dungeon Pets I like, but it's just kind of sitting at the bottom of that pile. Anyways, the better poop-based poop game, <laughs> Harvest, it's, it's it does really it's well. Good. Yeah. It, like, it's good, yeah. It's unassuming, like, and then you play it, and it's, it's a lot of fun. In explicitly trying to be... Agricola in 30 minutes, it does really well. And I typically do not like games that are trying to take a beloved classic and shorten them, but this one works. I think by making it more silly and not clinging on to the the idea of Agricola that much. Number 70, Great Western Trail, which is on its way to becoming, you know, kind of a modern classic of its own. Uh, I got to play it more with the correct rules. I think I've now played game. it once with the correct rules and like I've only played it once with the correct two rules, other times but... with a dramatically incorrect rule. But yeah, it definitely worked better with the correct rules. I guess I just got to play it more. This is one that's in my like, I mean, I've not played nearly as many games as you, but this is in my probably top 15 or 10, I would say. I really love this game. I always want to play. Yeah. Yeah. We got to we got to pull this one out more. Mm. Does it work with two players? I don't think so, but I'm looking at I don't think it would. I think you'd want at least three yeah. to play. But Anyways, moving on to another modern classic, number 69, is Power Grid. Mm-hmm. Nice. And yeah, this feels like the right place for it. I, we we have played this, I think, once during the pandemic. Yeah, we did. Oh, yeah, we played it and Lindsay went for all green power because she uh, works for a solar company, right? That's right. And I don't think it worked. It didn't work. It did not work. It was really close to working. I needed another turn, but um, it was intrinsically motivated and also logically motivated. <laughs> yeah, Power Grid's a good one. Number 68. Ryan, I'm going to have you guess at this one. So this is an 18xx game. Actually, this is the first 18xx game on the list. This is one I played recently and absolutely loved. It's only this low on the list because I've only played it once. And so maybe, you know, maybe it'll change. You know, there's a little bit of skepticism when you've only played the game once. But I'm curious if you can guess. An 18xx that you liked, but you've only played once? And I think it is was, this, it's fairly new, too. Is this Canada? No. I'll give you a hint. It starts with 18. <laughs> okay. That narrows it down. Uh, it's one game, I think. Isn't there an 18xx <laughs> I mean, there game? Can't there can't be more than there can't be more than 100 options. So. I have no idea. There actually know, can because they've more. started using letters and stuff. Yeah. I don't know which one you've only played once. A recent one? It's listed as a 2018 release. I don't know. <laughs> All right. This is... 18... Is, it, is it 1868? No, 1828. Oh, should have been 68. Have you played 28? <laughs> is this the J.C. Lawrence one? Yes. Oh, yeah. I did. I played this at a uh, convention. It was really good. Ah, I didn't think of this one because I haven't played it with you. Yeah, so it basically, it takes, it's kind of a spinoff, well, okay, almost every 18xx game is a spinoff of 1830. This is a very closely a spinoff of 1830 in that I think it's his attempt to try to fix 1830, in a sense. So where 1830, which is the second 18xx game that was ever made, and kind of the one that got people in love with this the this series of games... 1830 is incredibly financially focused. 1828 makes it much more balanced between the, f- the financial stuff and the operational stuff. And so it uses close to the same map. It might expand a little bit more west, uh, close to the same map and a lot of the same track and such. But there's a number of 
details in it that balance the game out to where it, it becomes much more of the style of 18xx game that i enjoy because i really the don't stones. like as much the super heavy financial stuff mm-hmm. this game you can glue two companies together to make a bigger company yes but they're not merged it is glue it is two companies glued together to be a system yes and so you can get around really weird train limitation stuff by doing that can yeah. you also can't you also merge if you wanted i forget i mean it's effectively merging but you kind of keep the two charters separate yeah um i don't think there's a separate merge maybe there is um the other thing it changes up the train list or train schedule which and the, it's a lot more interesting than other 18xx games because you've got it's got, the, got it's got a couple big, of quirky um, trains at the end yeah yeah like the double really one cool. that only that go, runs for a short time and dies or whatever it's got one that runs a short distance but doubles everything and then it's got another one that just runs a long distance it's 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 got a lot of fun touches um i remember really one, liking this one yeah yeah this is one if i played it more could become my favorite i think it's got that potential uh, but not not yet, because, again, I've only played it once. It's good stuff. Number 67 uh, is currently my number one game so far of 2021, but I am in the process of playing a lot of 2021 games to get a definitive list. Uh, but currently, this one's number one, and that's Magnate the First City by James Naylor, who was on the podcast a few months ago. And this is his attempt to make kind of Monopoly, but for gamers and Man, he did a really good job at it. Uh, it's super, super fun. Kind of reminds me of Power Grid. Got a lot of Power Grid stuff in it in terms of uh, turn order being important. It's got an auction for turn order. It's got... Is this of, the one with the market crash? Yeah. You're trying to... It's okay. a real estate game. You're trying to develop lucrative real estate properties by buying good property, building good buildings on it. But at a certain point, the entire market crash is based on people flooding it. And you have to pull out and liquidate before that happens, uh, which makes for a very, very fun end game. But I think throughout has really fascinating decisions. Um, I actually got my full copy of it and did, I think I posted a video of an unboxing. Or maybe that's the one that I recorded and failed at recording because my exposure was wrong. I don't remember. Jeez. Check the YouTube channel. There might be an unboxing. <laughs> There may not be because I overexposed it. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, the, the full package is really cool, uh, and I, I greatly enjoyed this game. Next, number 66, Brass Birmingham. I will say it's not, it won't be the last Brass game on the list. So, Oh, foreshadowing. <laughs> foreshadowing. I consider it Brass. The, the if you've brass, watched any of the lists for the last four years, you should not be surprised. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm no longer going for like the element of surprise on these because it'll be naturally surprising if no one has seen any of, or listened to any of these before. But if people have, they're not going to be surprised no matter what I do. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Brass burning them. Yeah, excellent game. It's yeah. an excellent game because it's Brass, but it's not as I don't like it as much as the other Brass. Lincolnshire, yeah. The barrels, too many barrels. It wasn't the barrels I disliked, it was the the building. No, it's the fact that two of the building chains are bad. They're weird. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I just don't There's, get them, maybe they are. The, the, the boxes, one is just underwhelming, it's underpowered. Yeah. And then the other one that alternates between a crappy one and all of the victory points is just weird to play with. Yeah, it is. Uh, 65 is Tiny Towns. We just played this. Yeah, we did. Uh, and I played it a few other times. This is one that has been played during the pandemic. And has it risen? No, actually, it fell. So my theory about games I've played during the pandemic rising on the list is not necessarily true, but will become true soon. The biggest risers near the top are definitely games I've been playing during the pandemic. This is a great gift game. It is another game with broad appeal, for sure. This is. I recommended this to my parents or my sister or something like that. So, yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Number 64, Pandemic Legacy Season 1. Again, this is a game that, you know, I, I'm not going to play again, so it's got to live in my memories. It's actually risen quite a bit. It was 87 last time, which, again, not really a big difference. But, you know, it debuted at number 20, and that was, I think, right after we played it. And then mm -hmm. 31, then down to 87, and now it's 64. So I think it'll hover around this 
point because I, I, I do remember it quite fondly. This one has a special place in my heart because I played about three to four games and then the actual pandemic happened. So um, I caused no. the pandemic from playing this game. But yeah, so I had to stop playing pandemic because of an actual pandemic. And I this came out in 20. Like, this didn't come out in 2020. So just very strange coincidence. Yeah, I've been playing, Aliens. Uh, season two and it's playing it during a pandemic is a little bit on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, everything's a disaster and people are dying and people are intentionally spreading a virus people wouldn't <laughs> intentionally spread a virus right <laughs> yeah i remember once i was talking i was talking to someone about board games and it was that conversation where they're like oh what do you do and i'm like oh i review board games and they're like oh that's interesting like monopoly I'm like <laughs> well you know there's actually a bunch of really cool games that are not that are much much better than monopoly and you know getting into that conversation but, you know, I was just throwing out, you know, like, maybe you've heard of some of, you know, what we call these, like, modern games or Euro games, like Catan, Ticket to Ride, Pandemic. And then there, and this was, like, early, early COVID, like, when it was still, like, fresh. And I just threw it out there because that's, you know, those are, like, the common games you'll see at Target or Walmart or sure. whatever. And they're, like, there's a game called Pandemic. And I was, like, oh, yeah, no, it came out a long time. It came out like 10 years ago. <laughs> it just happened to be, you know, you're curing, you're trying to cure the pandemic in it. At what point, yeah, at like what point after horrified. a pandemic are you allowed to like they create thought, a game about it? They thought yeah. it was like some exploitive thing. <laughs> that'd about be, COVID, yeah, geez, yeah. That'd, be dumb. that'd be bad. That'd be bad. Yeah, so COVID, pandemic. the board game is going to come out in like 100 years or so, you think? People no, have gotten over by that. then? I'm sure there's already a game nice. about COVID and there will be more. Oh, I saw a number of attempts like in mm-hmm. April of 2020 that people are trying to push their exploding kittens rip off COVID game oh, uh, on, on Kickstarter. That and then like all the TV shows that are just all about living with COVID. It's like, you know what? I, I want to watch TV to not think about the pandemic. Thank you. That's true. All the all the TV shows where they had to the writers' room had to make a decision, like they're supposedly set in in contemporary times, and they're like, "Well, do we have COVID be a thing in our show, or we do we just ignore it?" Yeah, that was that's weird. Number sixty three is Downforce, staying about the same spot it was before. Still a great game as long as. You don't play online. I don't know if I've mentioned that. I've mentioned this on the podcast before, but here's the thing about Downforce. So if you haven't played it, it's a racing game, but the big thing is that you're bidding, you're placing secret bets on who you think is going to win the race as you are playing. If everyone bets on the the leading car, all you're doing is giving whoever owns that car the win. So if you do that, you're playing for second place. And everyone online, when I played online, when I got on Board Game Arena, I kept doing this. And I'm like, people, you're playing the game incorrectly. <laughs> that is not good strategy. You're just king-making the winner. And it drives me nuts. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't play online anymore. Don't just automatically bid on whoever's winning the race at that point in time. Because you're just making them win the game. Unless it's you, well, then yeah, sure, bet on your own car. Anyways, there's my downforce rant. Number 62 is Mysterium. Do you haven't played, yeah, I haven't played this one either since the pandemic, because this one, you want a good number I love this people. one so much. But yeah, I, We should play more, game. though. I really like this one a lot. Yeah, we should pull it out next time. We have, we have four people. Good memories from that one. Another one I haven't played in a while, El Grande. There's another pre-2000 game. Ah, classic area control game actually went up a good number of spots on my list from last year, went up 14 spots. I'm not going to read too much into that, but it's a game that I will, I definitely want to play again for sure. Like I said, that's kind of the worst area control game. No, I'm just kidding. It was fine. I was just, I thought Mark overrated it. Mark like hyped it up as like this incredible, like fantastic trend setting game that defined the genre and was the best example of it and like it's fine it's good it's not the greatest area control game of all time it might be the second greatest and it came out before 2000 so it doesn't really count as a game it's not a, it can't be a good game if it came out before 2000 yeah um, that's, so yeah yeah all right well, literally people no i i, I don't I, we all know i don't know immediately something better there's just 
games that I like a lot better than it in general. So yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, we'll we'll jump to a newer game on the list then, uh, which Lindsay will be excited about. This is Knit of Lear. Mm. Oh, I love this game, game so much. I I love this game so much. Sounds so cool. Now this will be the thing that I constantly compare everything to on the list. We're past a bit of culture. This will be the next thing. <laughs> the We're next, past GWT. The GWT, and then now it's this. Yes. Is this top ten for you, Lindsay? Oh, that's tough. I would really need to think about that. At least, like, definitely top twenty for sure. I I don't think Knit of Lear will rise on my list in future years. I think there's a pretty hard cap on how high it can go up. Because I've gotten to the point where I've kind of, I feel like I've explored the game a good amount. Um, I played it a number of times online, and actually was was doing really well at it. <laughs> I, I had like an eight game win streak on ranked on board game arena, so I was feeling pretty good about that. But yeah, it's it's going to be the one. It's on a, this spot on the list, I think, on its strength that I will probably never turn a game down of Knit of Lear. <laughs> Like, if someone's like, let's play this one. Like, That's oh, good yeah. to know. That's good game. to know. It's not, you know, it's not too long. It 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 fits that kind of comfortable spot where it's just always going to be fun. 59, Fog of Love. This one is kind of like Go, because I had a very weird experience with it, but I respect it a lot. Still think about this game a lot. I do want to play it again with Amber and just see what it's like. I think I remember watching you and Amber play this once and it was really funny because you guys just communicate and think about stuff very differently. And uh, you just, the way you prioritize or like make assumptions about how someone else would communicate this piece of information is, it's funny to watch because you guys just aren't the same in that. (laughs) Well, it's weird because you're supposed to be taking on a character in Fog of Love, but you're also supposed to, you're also supposed to participate in these kind of like prisoner's dilemma things to succeed. And so there's this really weird tension between like how much are they going f- like committing to their character here or how much are they is their own personality or preferences leaking into this? It's really weird. But I think about it a lot because it is a game that has independent win conditions. And I really, really, really want to explore that when I start designing my own games because I think it's brilliant and I think people don't do it enough. So in Fog of Love, you win or lose independent of the other person. So both players could win, one could win, or neither could win. And it's just whether or not you reach your own personal milestone of success based on the relationship. I don't think Amber and I ever played a game where both of us won, uh, but usually one of us did. And I think that's really fascinating to explore. So Yeah, it's a weird one. And that's one you don't even necessarily care about winning or losing. It's the sort of thing you could play almost for an audience of your friends and just they enjoy the spectacle of what weird thing is going on. I've only played it once, but I need to play it more. It's also that weird space where you're deaf. It's kind of a role playing game, but it's got enough board game like components and it looks like a board game. But it kind of is a role playing game, but you don't have to play it as a role playing game. It's weird. Amber forbade me from creating a character based on myself because uh, I was going to do that as a fun experiment, but she, she said that was not allowed. That's probably smart. <laughs> <laughs> Just in general, that you should not be yourself. In, in, yeah, sure, but uh, it's it's with Amber. And that's why it was Devin, a uh, guy with a YouTube vlog uh, reviewing deli. It's named after my friend Devin who works in a deli. <laughs> <laughs> he was not happy about that. <laughs> All right, 58, Robinson Crusoe. And this is one that rose in the rankings, and I think it's just because I really want to play it again. <laughs> have, we played the, have you played this since, like, the original s- couple of times we played? I don't think so. So we played it at a convention, we played it at one of the PAXs, and then Matt bought it, and we played it a couple of times soon after, and I don't think I've played it since. But I kept- yeah, we really enjoyed this game as a really hard co-op game with a lot of interesting scenarios, but we never really got too far into it. Yeah, uh, so I think this one went up 25 spots because I was, every time I compared it, I'm like, I have really good memories of that and I really want to play it again. Uh, so I kept ranking it over other stuff. 57, however, is a game we have played a lot during the pandemic because it's our go-to Oh, we have 10 minutes to kill or we're too, our brains hurt too much to play anything else. Let's pull up Catch the Moon, uh, which I'm pretty sure is the only and highest dex. Well, 
Force Science has dexterity in it. Yeah. But I think this is the highest dexterity game. It's got to be. Yeah, for sure. Most likely. Yeah. My my favorite dexterity game at the moment. It's it's a balancing game, right? So it's got that great tension in watching someone attempt to balance, or in this case, like hook ladders in into each other. And it's like the Jenga suspension. Yeah, it's the Jenga thing, except it's just a it's it's a more elegant but it's uh, better. implementation yeah. of it because you don't have to build the whole thing, and the penalty for failure is less in terms yeah. of effort of continuing the game, uh, but not in terms of the amount of shame you feel. Lindsay, do you prefer going for the highest possible ladder or like connecting two on the side? Ooh, I like going for the cheap shots, like the ones where you just like stack a ladder immediately like against another ladder that's already hanging. And then we all those shame are you. my yes, and then you all shame me. Yes, that's my favorite way to go about things. But no, I love this game, and yeah, love fitting it in between whatever other games I'm playing. And then also, uh, I think it's like yeah, great for like I would bring it to a, any type of gathering, and people would have fun, even non-game people. Oh yeah, yeah. So top ten games that bring shame. Top ten games that bring shame. Yeah, it's it's got to be on there. Number 56 is 1846, the first 18xx game I played, and still one I think of fondly. I'll go back to for sure. Is this ranked 10 spots too hot, low? (laughs) Because it wasn't 46? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It did fall. It did pass 46. Last year, or last uh, time, it was 39. You're getting further away. I don't think it'll go up much more, right? I think I've again I've explored this one. I kind of know where it where it sits, and I still enjoy playing this one a lot. It's one of the regular ones we pull out online. We've been playing online a bunch, and this is one of the ones we go back to. But it is like I've played it, and it's kind of just like, all right, let's deal out the cards and see who has the best hand. Yeah, it's got a bit of that. I think I just mean that in the sense that we've played it a dozen times now or more, and so there's not a lot of suspense. It's kind of just you know. Mm-hmm. Pick your pick your approach, play it out, see who wins. Yeah, and it's that kind of thing that I don't think it'll it'll ever rise on this list. I think it's 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 kind of solidified itself in this spot. Number fifty five was, I believe, the game I named my favorite game of twenty nineteen, and that's mm-hmm. Pax Transhumanity, uh, which I haven't mm-hmm. gotten a chance to play since because everyone I play it with doesn't like it. <laughs> yeah, because it sucks. It's no, it's not. No, you it like suck. it. You liked it me no i did not like oh, it. you did not like it that's right no i matt thought liked it. okay i think it's an interesting yeah matt liked it i think it's an interesting game but i completely disagree with the whole thematic argument i do not think it's thematic at all i think it's extremely abstract yeah i gotta play it again uh, this is one i really want to play again for sure okay. i just gotta find i just gotta i gotta take it over to matt's house and play it with him more because he liked it, it it felt it felt like they had kind of this this kind of interesting game of you've got these different categories and columns and that you're trying to build these things. And then they're like, let's just slap a bunch of sciencey words all over this and pretend it's research. That irked me a little bit. Yeah. The, the ideas it presents are cool, but there's no real thematic tie to what you're doing and you're not really researching these technologies. It's just, you're getting cards that have cool words. on. You're, them. you're accumulating the same color cubes or whatever. Yeah. So. It was a cool game. I, I undefeated at it, so I can never play again. <laughs> I think there might be more there. I don't know. I, uh, it's definitely one I want to explore. I'm, I'm not confident on my assessment of it, of its thematicness, but it does excite me. I think it has the potential. Number 54, innovation. It's zany. It's wild. You can theoretically play with more than two players, but I always forget that. So I don't think anyone does. It's. I would highly recommend you play this as a two-player game. Yeah, this is basically a two-player game. Yeah, you should definitely play it as a two-player game, and it is a great two-player game. Uh, definitely my favorite Chuddock game. People get really crazy about Glory to Rome, but man, I had a miserable time playing <laughs> Glory to Rome. Innovation is a lot more room to play around with stuff, uh, which is why I like it quite a bit. Uh, number 53 is Tokaido. One of the early games I bought and enjoyed and still love it. I, I still love it. I don't quite know why. It's just pleasant. The, the second most pleasant game. Wait, what's the most pleasant game? The one with the birds and the colors and the flowers. Oh, yeah. Sekatsu. Uh, oh, Sekatsu. Yeah. They're both very, very pleasant. Next is the game that went up the most. Mm, high Riser. Uh, the highest riser 
not because I played it, but again, because I saw it and I'm like, man, I remember having such a fun time and I really, really want to play this one again. Any guesses, Orion? I played it with you. It was me, you, and one other person played this. One other person has a high rising game that we haven't played in a while or in a long time that you really enjoyed but want to go back to. I don't know. Three Kingdoms Redux. Oh, yeah. 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 Three player specific game. Really fascinating worker placement system uh, with all these unique workers designed entirely around the three player experience. Yeah. I want to play this one again. Yeah, specifically, exactly specifically three-player game like Churchill. Mm -hmm. Um, Really, 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 really good. Really good stuff. I don't know why people don't talk about this one more. I feel like most people probably have never heard of it. It's so good. It was really good. Final game for today is another 18xx game. That's three of them in this segment of the list. There won't be many more. 1822CA, which is... The biggest 18xx game I've played. It's big and epic, and it has so many auctions, just auctions everywhere, and I love auctions. So this one's a blast. I think we almost got a play of it scheduled, but then I think Omicron hit or something like that. Something diverted us, maybe the Delta version, and uh, we never scheduled it again. Uh, But yeah, 1822CA is big and epic and very, very fun. It's a completely different feel. Like, it actually feels like time is progressing. Most 18xx games kind of feel contained. They feel kind of constricted, like you're you're compacted in with the other players. This one actually feels like there's big, vast swaths of land and time that are progressing more than, than many of the others. Yeah, it felt like we were watching the development of railroads throughout history in Canada for over like a century um, during playing the game. It was really fun. Yeah, but yeah, good stuff. That's what we've got for today. Any surprises so far? We're halfway through the list. Any surprises, complaints? Yeah, I think Tiny Towns is yeah pretty high up. Like once again, I'm gonna say you know I think there's a few games that it shouldn't be above. I do still think it's a good game, but I you don't love Tiny Towns. And I, I love I love Tiny Towns, and I think it's so fun. And I yeah, I understand like you know it's not by complexity, obviously, but. I just still think that there's just other better developed games for what they are that are on the list below it. I think I would say Takaido and Innovation are higher than I would have expected. I'm not surprised to see them. I would have thought those would be more around like 70 maybe. Yeah, Takaido um, and Fog of Love sticking on the list and so high up are a bit surprising, but yeah, they're both. Yeah, again, both we're still getting, we're still kind of at the point where even this bottom I mean, half could These are be almost rearranged. all... These are almost all still eights, right? Or are these all these still are eights? all eights? Yeah, yeah. So these are all the same base ranking. I think I'm also surprised that Mysterium is actually pretty high up, uh, or just like on your top hundred games at all. I actually don't know if I thought that you liked that game. I there was a time early on when I was a little down on it, and then we played a couple more times and had a blast, and then haven't probably played since then. But yeah, there was a time where I was a little bit more down on it. Anyways. Good stuff. Next list, I'll preview. Yeah, next next time we get into some really, really good stuff. We get into, we get a couple, my highest brand new games to the list will be in next episode. And then we'll definitely get to the point where these games are not interchangeable with lower ones on the list. We're, we're going to start scaling up to the really, truly best stuff, uh, which I find super exciting. Thanks for listening, everybody. If you want to read reviews of most of these, yeah, I'd say most of these so far, go to thethoughtfulgamer.com. Uh, if you want to support us, go to patreon.com slash thethoughtfulgamer. Uh, please rate and review the podcast on wherever you get your podcast, and you can follow me on social media. I'm trying to post more uh, regularly. I'm using hashtags now. Everyone keeps saying to use hashtags. I find them awkward, but I'm trying it out. As a millennial that you didn't know to use hashtags, I'm very disappointed in you and feel like I've not done enough for you as a friend. Is that a millennial thing? Or are the younger generations moving past the hashtag? No, the hashtag is definitely a millennial thing. Like, definitely a millennial thing. We, we call, like, we're the people who called them hashtags instead of pound signs. I so, just listened um, to a podcast about that. About the okay. creation of the hashtag, yeah. Do, do Zoomers even use hashtags? Is that still a thing? Or is it only on, like, Twitter? 
I don't know these generations. Does TikTok have no Does TikTok idea. have hashtags? TikTok, TikTok does have hashtags. Yes. Okay. Thank okay. you for okay. as your resident youth, not you. You, 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 you are the youth, Lindsay. You're in you are the, the youths. Yeah. 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 Tell us what the crazy kids are up to these days. Yeah. Oh, that's a whole separate podcast, Mark. Maybe maybe we'll learn more in uh in fifty to twenty five. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you need you need a youth check in with Lindsay segment. <laughs> what are the youths up to? <laughs> Give us a new slang word for the week. I am a spy, so I'll let you know. I have the inside scoop. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I'm posting more on social media: Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I think that was everything I was supposed to say, but I got very distracted by hashtags. Thanks for listening, everybody. Goodbye.